Hey everyone, and welcome back to Miss Azrael's Gaming. So today we're going to jump into a new game called Case Files, The Death of Paulette Williams. And this is another mystery type game where you interview people and stuff like that. I've done quite a few of them. And uh, this one, you know, got a good rating on Steam. So I thought we would go ahead and check it out. There is music. I can turn it down, but I think that'll take out the... I'm assuming there's probably actors, actual vocals. It's not just, you know reading that I would have to read and I don't want it to, you know, take away from that. So hopefully YouTube will not, you know, give me a copyright <laughs> issue. So let's go ahead and start a new game. Oh, interesting. I want to leave. I quit my job. Looks like the tour moves when I approach it. Okay. All right, the video feed oh. should be up and running, so if you can see me and hear me, then everything is working exactly as it should. Now, I just want to take a quick moment just to go over the setup that you got there. Uh, I want to make sure everything's working properly, make sure you oh, feel comfortable cool. uh, with everything before we get the suspects in, all right? Now, what you're looking at now, this is the real-time video feed, and you've got the controls right in front of you that you can use to toggle back and forth between the two different camera angles. Now, this whole system, it's all touch screen, so all you gotta do is just you know touch whichever feed you want, and that's the one that's gonna be displayed. So why don't you go ahead and take a quick sec and just you know toggle back and forth, make sure everything's working properly. Awesome. All right. Now, as long as this video feed is running, it's also being recorded and saved. In fact, it's actually recording right now in case you want to revisit any of this information later. Now, as soon as the recording stops, that's when it becomes available for you um, on the playback monitor that you also have in there. Now, this is where I'm counting on you, okay? This is where I really need you to utilize that playback monitor and carefully analyze these suspects, all right? See if there's anything, and I mean anything, that you happen to catch that I'm going to miss while I'm in here, okay? That's where I'm counting on you. All right, now the video files that are gonna be on that playback monitor, you have full control over, but you gotta be aware that those files will not be available to you until we're done with each session and the recording stops, all right? So that covers all the, the tech stuff. Now, the case, all right, let's do a quick recap on the case here. So uh, Samantha Williams, age 31, found her mom, Paulette Williams, age 62, dead in her bed after being on in-home hospice care for about two months, okay? Nothing out of the ordinary there, seeing as though Paulette was diagnosed with stage four pancreatic cancer. Now, part of the um, hospice care was for Paulette to receive these 30 milligram Oxycontin pills. Now, the problem is that the uh, medical examiner noted extremely high levels of Oxycontin in Paulette's system, okay? These levels far exceed the 30 milligrams. Now, to top it off, the, uh, the hospice worker, a guy named Michael Schaefer, he noted that there were missing pills when he went to do his final count. All right? There was actually five missing pills of Oxycontin to be exact. Now, it's important to note that uh, Samantha and her husband, a guy named Elliot Jordan, who's age 34, um, they're the sole caretakers, all right? So they're the only ones that are able to administer Paulette's uh, Oxycontin on a regular basis. Now, I did have a chance to talk with both of them uh, about a week or so ago, um, and things just aren't adding up, okay? They just aren't. Now, fortunately, they are being very cooperative, okay? Which is why they've agreed to come down here today and do this second interview with me. Now, since I spoke with them, um, I was able to subpoena uh, some documents and some records to hopefully, you know, shed light and just uh, get a little insight as to what actually is going on here. And I actually did uncover a few things. Um, so I learned that Samantha has um, a lot of debt, all right, a pretty significant amount. Most of it's student loans, but it's pretty significant nonetheless. Um, I learned that her mom, uh, Paulette, has a life insurance policy for $250,000 that is payable to her only child, Samantha. Uh, and I learned that Samantha booked a one-way ticket to Costa Rica uh, for July of later this year. All right, now, given all of that, I think it's safe to say that foul play is absolutely a possibility here. All right, now, obviously, I'm going to be the physical presence in the room, but I'm going to rely on you, all right, like a lot, okay, because you're going to be my eye in the sky, all right? You have a far better vantage point than I do, okay? So I'll field all the questions in here, but I'm absolutely going to follow your lead, all right? So I need you to use everything that you got in that room to your advantage, okay? Because we have one goal. That's it, right? Solve this case. That's our goal, all right? Um, that's it. That's all I got. So I'm going to bring Samantha in here first. Uh, and we'll get the video feed back up and running in just a sec. All right? Wait, I'm not ready. <laughs> it's like drinking out of a 
water hydrant, man. There's so much here. Okay, so that's the trip for Costa Rica. Okay, okay. bank statement. Spend the week are recording. Uh, today is Saturday, February. I mean, how do we know our mom didn't just take the pills? I am Detective Martin Ruiz. Badge number 7621, and with me here is Samantha Williams. Uh, Samantha, I'm going to ask that you please spell your first and last name for me. Um, Samantha, S A M A N T H A Williams, W I L L. I want to look at this stuff. Thank you. Uh, and now I do need you to acknowledge that this statement is being video and audio recorded and that you do consent to that recording. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Um, I know we had a chance to go over your rights in the waiting room, but I do want to remind you that those rights do remain at all times today, okay? Um, and I'm also, you are by no means obligated to make this, uh, this statement, right? You understand that? Uh, yeah, I do understand, yeah. Um, the last thing is I know um, we spoke right, about a week or so ago, uh, so I'm probably going to ask you some very similar questions. Um, if I do, just please go ahead and, and answer those, but at this time for the record, okay? Okay. All right. So, Samantha, let's, um, let's just start with you telling me what happened. Um, okay. Uh, where do you want me to start? Wherever you'd like. Just tell me whatever you think I should know. Okay. Well... Trying to get out of that. It's a note system. That's cool. That much to tell. Um, my mom was on hospice care for quite some time, as you know. Uh, stage four pancreatic cancer. And uh, I woke up one morning and uh, found her dead. Um, it wasn't really a shock or anything. You know, we were expecting it, but um, we just didn't really know. Shouldn't seem that distraught. And Samantha, you're a substitute teacher, right? Um, yeah. I know everybody so mourns I'm differently, but. So I'm assuming that's the reason that you were up so early that morning? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I usually get up about six. About six. You can continue. Um, well, I, I woke up. I was doing my morning routine. I took a shower. Went to make breakfast. Um, then I was gonna go give my mom her morning pill and. Okay, well, well, well. Um, so around what time was it that you were giving her this morning pill? Uh, Six forty-five. Six forty-five. Okay. And then, um, yeah, what did you do after that? Well, I went in to wake up Elliot, and uh, we called the hospice nurse. So see, this is where I'm lost. I don't understand. Why did you call the hospice nurse? Why didn't you guys call 911? Um, well, that, that was our protocol. Uh, we'd gone over it quite a few times with our care team, and um, that was just what we were supposed to do. Now, um, the care team, uh, that's, uh, that's Michael Schaefer, right? He's the hospice nurse that's with that care team? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I called Michael, and he was there actually within about an hour. There were all these other people that came in um, to clean up everything else, clean up the body. <laughs> Elliot and I, we just stayed in our room out of the way. And uh, just for the record, Elliot's your husband, right? Ah, uh, yeah. Yeah. I know it's confusing because we don't share the same last name. And how long have the two of you been married? Um, just under two years. Just under two years. All right. Um, so why don't you why don't you tell me about the days leading up to all this? Okay. Uh, how far back? Why don't you go uh, go back to Monday, February seventh, since that'll put us about two days prior to your mom's death. Monday uh, was pretty typical. Um, I got up. I did my morning routine. I went to work. I went to the gym and the grocery store, and then I was home about 7.30. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> Elliot actually had already ordered Thai food, so uh, we had Thai food and then sat and watched TV for the rest of the evening. I went to bed about 10.30. 10. 10. Now, did you, um, did you give your mom a, a dose of Oxycontin that morning? Um, yeah, 
I do the morning and Elliot does the evening. So it's just the, the two pills every day? Yeah, about 12 hours apart, approximately, anyway. Um, sometimes there's a breakthrough dose if she's really having like a lot of discomfort, but it's not normally part of the routine. Gotcha. Now, I did um, did have a chance to, to speak to Michael, right, the, the hospice nurse. Um, are you aware that he had visited that morning? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Michael comes every Monday. I, I, I'm normally not there. I'm usually at work, so Elliot's the one that lets him in. So, seeing as though you weren't there, then it's safe to say that you, you really don't have any idea like what could have happened during his visit, right? But, but, I mean, I, I don't think that it would be anything different than a regular visit. Why? Did Michael say something happened that day? No, no, not at all. Um, no, I was just curious, that's all. So, Tuesday, um, Tuesday, February 8th, how'd that day go for you? Um, honestly, about, about the same. Um, minus, I guess, the gym and the grocery store. I, I was pretty tired, so I went home right after work. Elliot and I just had some leftover Thai food, watched TV for the rest of the evening. And I went to bed, just like I always do. And um, that would have been around like 10, 10-ish, 10 right? Like, yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, give or take 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm going to assume that Elliot um, also, that same day, gave her, um, her evening dose of Oxycontin, is that correct? Yeah. <clears throat> okay, so so seeing as though you didn't give your mom um, a pill the morning of her death, right, then it's safe to say that Elliot, right, he would have been the last person to give your mom Oxycontin, is that correct? Uh, right, like nobody else could have given her a pill, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's correct. Hmm. Any breakthrough doses that day? Uh, no. No, not that I remember. No. Now, Samantha, these these five missing pills. Do you have any idea how these five pills could have gone missing? No. no. Well, you are at least aware, right, that, that these five pills have gone missing. Yeah. Um, and I'm, I'm assuming that's part of the reason why you brought us down here. Yeah, yeah, that's a, that's a big part of the reason. Samantha, I, I can't seem to understand how five 30 milligram Oxycontin pills could have gone missing. Honestly, I, I can't tell you. I, I don't know. You don't? All right, Samantha, is there, is there anything else that you think I should be aware of? Anything that you need to tell me? Um, no, not really, no. Uh, but can I ask you a question? Mm -hmm. Of course. Um, are we being suspected of something? Samantha, foul play is absolutely a possibility here, yes. Right, that, that's why I'm here. My job is to try to figure out what happened. Okay, but as long as you're honest with me, then we're good, right? Uh, yeah, of course. Okay, good. So look, there's just one last thing um, that I want to clear up with you, okay? Um, first, uh, I need you to verify you, you still have some student loan debt, is that correct? Yeah, I do. Okay. And um, it's a pretty large amount that you owe, right? Uh, about 105000 yeah. 105000 Wow. That's, um, that's a pretty significant amount of money. Yeah. 
Now, prior to your mom's death, did you know that she had a life insurance policy for $250,000 that's payable directly to you, her only child? I, I did. I just, I mean, I didn't know about it until she got ill. So prior to all this, you had no idea that she had this, this life insurance policy? I, I mean, I'm, I'm sure she had something. I assumed she had something. But I didn't know any of the details of it, the amount, nothing. All right, what can you, what can you tell me about Costa Rica? Costa Rica? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Costa Rica. Um, you're probably referring to the plane ticket that I bought. Yeah, that's correct. What's that all about? Uh, there's just been so much going on. Um, I've been really stressed out with, and I, I was just, uh, planning a little vacation, um, for a bit when school was out, that's all. So that's why you bought the, the ticket for July? Yeah. Now, um. So the problem is you, you bought a one-way ticket, Samantha, right? So were you, were you never planning on coming back? No, no, no. Um, no, it was a, it just a cheap fare that I found. Um, there's this app that tracks your purchases for you, um, but it only deals in one-way fare tickets. It's for plane travel. Um, so I saw that t ticket and I bought that flight and I just was waiting for the right return flight. I just hadn't found it yet. What about Elliot? Two of you weren't going to go together? Um, no. Uh, uh, we weren't sure if my mom would still need care at the time. And Samantha, you you didn't think to mention this this earlier. I mean, this this seems like a huge oversight, don't you think? Uh, I didn't see what it had to do with anything. It's just a vacation. It's just a vacation. <laughs> that never returns. Samantha, are you okay? Um, you don't have to bring any of this up to Elliot, do you? No, he didn't know about it. Possibly, yeah. Okay. Samantha, are you, are you sure there, there isn't something that you need to tell me? Like you murdered your mother? I mean, no. not going to make it easy. All right, Samantha, let's, um, let's give you a break, okay, and we'll get your husband in here, okay? Sorry. Okay. Also, by the way, if you hear, like, a snoring sound that is my dog, <laughs> she's under my desk. Um, so I've been trying to kind of remain quiet so we can all hear the uh, information that we're getting. And uh, you're, you're probably going to hear her. Okay, Elliot, <laughs> we are recording... Um, I do want to wheelchair? remind you that the rights that we went over in the waiting room, they do apply at all times today, okay? Cool. All right. Um, okay, so uh, today is uh, Saturday, February So far, the acting's been really, really good. I am Detective Martin Ruiz, badge number 761, and uh, with me here is Elliot Jordan. Um, Elliot, can you do me a favor and please spell your first and last name? First name, E-L-L-I-O-T. <laughs> last name, J-O-R-D-A-N. Thank you. Uh, I do ask that you please acknowledge that this uh, statement is being video and audio recorded and that you are consenting to that recording. Is that correct? That's correct, yeah. Okay. And uh, lastly, I do want you to be aware that you do not um, have to make this statement. You're not obligated. Uh, you understand that, right? Understood. Okay. So, Elliot, um, yeah, I, I, I do want to get your take on things, so why don't you uh, just tell me what happened? Um. 
mean, there's not much to tell. Uh, Paula was on hospice, and uh, she was expected to pass away. And that's uh, that's it. Well, it was just so matter of fact. I mean, there's really not much to say. It's just an unfortunate situation. All right. Well, let's see if we can um, maybe maybe explore a little more here. Um, why don't you tell me what happened on uh, Monday, February seventh? Um, there's nothing out of the ordinary. Um, I woke up around eleven a.m. that morning. <clears throat> Our uh, hospice nurse, Michael, he gets to the house on Mondays at noon. Um, let him in when he got to the house and um, he tended to Paulette while I took a video call from a client. Um, he left later that afternoon and uh, I continued to work. And you're a sound engineer, is that right? Yes. Okay. And you work from home? Yeah. Right. Uh, okay, you can, uh, you can continue. Um, so after I wrapped for the day, um, I ordered some Thai food. Um, I hadn't eaten all day, I was starving, so I didn't wait for Sam to get home. But uh, she got to the house pretty soon after I finished eating and uh, we watched some TV. She said they ate um, together. She went to bed. Uh, and then after she went to sleep, I hopped on video games online and played until about two a.m. That and then let's sleep. Um, do, you, uh, do you normally go to bed that late? Yeah, usually later, honestly. Um, I have trouble sleeping, so I just kind of stay up until I'm drained. I thought you meant use a notebook or whiteboard. So, um, I don't want to run all the way over there. I assume, right, you, uh, you gave Paulette her, uh, her dose of Oxycontin that evening. Does that sound right? Yeah, I gave her a dose um, around 7. Um, it's routine. So, so based on this routine, you obviously gave her um, you gave her a pill of oxycotton that that night, right, February seventh. Um, I'm going to assume that you also gave her um, a dose on uh, Tuesday, February eighth. That night, does that sound accurate? Yes. Okay. Um, all right. So, um, what about Tuesday? Anything out of the ordinary on Tuesday? No. Um, I worked on the track for most of the day for a client. Um, and uh, Sam got home around five. We uh, ate leftovers from the night before and watched TV again. And then after she went to sleep, I hopped on and played video games and did that the rest of the night. And that's it? That's it. All right. Um, so, so based on everything that you're saying, um, then you would have been uh, the last person to give Paulette a dose of uh, oxycotton right prior to her death. I suppose so. Okay. Uh, did either you or Samantha give uh, give her any breakthrough doses on that day? No. Are you sure? I mean, as far as I'm aware. No. Okay. So, okay. So let's let's assume that everything that you're saying is is accurate. Um, can you explain to me how uh, five 30 milligram Oxycontin pills could have gone missing? Um, the only thing I've thought about is that maybe the pharmacy messed up. Happens from time to time, right? Um, I mean, yeah, it happens. Um, it's extremely rare, but sure. Um, but, but see, even, even if that were the case, right, that, that still doesn't explain how Paul had overdosed, does it? I guess not. So, Elliot, right, my, my job is to figure out how Paul had overdosed. Okay, that's my job. So, um, with that in mind, is there anything that you need to tell me? Anything that I should be aware of? I can't think of anything else. I think we've covered everything. Okay, you sure? Yeah, I can't think of anything else. All right, um, we'll take a, take a short He's break. not going to bring up the plane ticket? I mean, other than... 
I think him saying he ate because I could have swore she said they ate together. He's calling me. Hello? Well, I don't know about you, but it feels like both of them are hiding something. Yeah. Samantha definitely feels off, and Elliot seems a bit too nonchalant for my taste. Mm hmm. I'm gonna bring Samantha back in here in just a sec. I wanna see if I can pry some more information out of her. But look, before we do that, we really need to think about how we want to approach this. Good cop, bad cop. I think cop. that if I put some pressure on her, she'll crack for sure. But honestly, I'm conflicted. I wanna be the bad cop. Part of me also feels that I should keep playing nice. I don't know, maybe a, a calm approach may get her to trust me and open up more. Mm -hmm. But then again, if this is all an act, she might see right through that bullshit and use it in her favor. Honestly, I don't know. It's hard to get an exact read on her. Why don't you do some reviewing? See if anything helps guide how we should move forward. Maybe you can get a better take on things. And listen, take all the time you want, okay? I don't care if these two are here all day and night. <laughs> when you're ready, you give me a call and you let me know how you want to play this. I'll trust your judgment. All right, I'll talk to you soon. Okay, bye-bye. <laughs> okay, uh, keep selection pressed to lock in your choice. So, comma, Samantha, pressure. Um... Okay, so now how do I... This must be the review. Is this the review? Alright. Skip. Okay. Samantha, we are recording. There were all these other people that came in. Uh, See, I don't, for I me... Mean, let me pause this real quick. I've dealt with hospice uh, a couple of times with uh, grandparents, and I don't know if it's different for when somebody's in hospice at home. I mean, maybe if you know, you can you know let me down know down in the comments. Maybe I'm thinking overthinking this, but hospice nurses are always there, and it's kind of like on a rotation until the person passes away. Um, but like I said, in home, I don't know if they just do visits. I would think they would still be there, but I could be wrong. So, I mean, that just sounds odd to me that the nurse only comes in once a week. They only see him on a Monday. And so he had been there to at least check her, and then two days later, she's dead. I don't know. It seems odd. Um, I got up. I did my morning routine. I went to work. Uh, I went to the gym. But so far, I'm not really seeing any discrepancies other than maybe this one. Elliot actually had already ordered Thai food, so uh, we had Thai food and then sat. And yeah, see, she implies that like they went and ate, went like they ate together. Ten. Now, did you um, did you give your mom a, a dose of oxycotton that morning? Uh, yeah, I do the morning and Elliot does the evening. So it's just the, the two pills every day. Yeah, about twelve hours apart, approximately. Anyway, um, sometimes there's a breakthrough dose. Now, here she says they give her oxy 12 hours apart. Um, now, according to Elliot, he gave, did he say he gave her the pill? Okay, Elliot. At like... All that while I took a video call from a client. Um, he left later that afternoon, and uh, I continued to work. And you're a sound engineer? Is that right? I mean, who's watching her while he's working? I mean, I get that he's working from home and can help her, but he doesn't mention once that he goes um, and checks on her throughout so the day. After I wrapped for the day, um, I ordered some Thai food. Uh, I hadn't eaten all day. I was starving, so I didn't wait for Sam to get home. But, uh, she got to the house pretty soon after I finished eating and uh, we watched some TV. Um, she went to wait, the wait, 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 hold on. Oop. All right, well, let's see if we can. Um... Okay, can you work from home? Yeah. Okay, um, okay you can uh, continue. Um, so, after I wrapped for the day, um, I ordered some Thai food. Uh, I hadn't eaten all day was starving so I didn't wait for Sam to get home but uh she got some house did he say what time um, he left later that afternoon did he say 5 or 5 30 or is that the day before I continued to work and you're a sound engineer is that right yes okay. and you work from home yeah 
Um, okay, you can uh, continue. Um, so after I wrapped for the day, um, I ordered some Thai food. Uh, I hadn't eaten all day. I was starving, so I didn't wait for Sam to get home. But uh, she got to the house pretty soon after I finished eating, and uh, we watched some TV. Um, she went okay, so if what he's saying is she got home shortly after he finished eating, that means he wouldn't have clocked off work till about 7 or like 6 something. And I mean, I guess he probably had it delivered, I'm assuming. Didn't just go and get the takeout. He might have had it delivered. I don't know. I mean, I guess that could fit. But I feel like maybe it was the second day. And uh, Sam got home. Around. So um, I'm going to assume, right, you... Uh, you gave Paulette her uh, her dose of oxycotton that evening. Does that sound right? Yeah, I gave her a dose um, around seven. Um, around seven. Now, granted, it would only be an hour later. But if Sam gives it to her at six, the time he would actually give it to her is around six again that night. If I did my math right, so six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, six again that night. But here he says he gave it to her at 7. Now, it could have been an hour late, or maybe the Sam gave it to her an hour late. Routine, correct. So, so, based on this routine, you obviously gave her um, you gave her a pill of Oxycontin that, that night, right, February 7th. Um, I'm going to assume that you also gave her um, a dose on uh, Tuesday, February 8th that night. Does that sound accurate? Yes. Okay. Okay. Um, all right, so um, what about Tuesday? Anything out of the ordinary on Tuesday? No. Um, I worked on the track for most of the day for a client. Um, and uh, Sam got home. Okay, I guess he doesn't say when he stops working. He uh, ate leftovers from the night before. And okay, so he doesn't actually say when they stopped, when he stopped working. But he does collaborate, uh, corroborate with Sam that she got home early instead of her normal time because she didn't feel like going to the gym. I, I don't know. It's hard. I'm not seeing anything. Yeah, just one for her. So debit card payments. So they have an auto loan video streaming service. It's like she gets paid every two weeks. So bi-weekly, they have a credit card, internet, hmm, that doesn't make sense. Unless I'm misreading it wrong, here in this direct debit credit card payment, I don't have an arrow to point to it, but it's the second amount on December 15th is for $350. In their account... Oh no, because she got paid. Okay, I'm, I'm reading it backwards. That's what I was doing. I was going to say, wait a minute, I think I just saw discrepancy, but I'm reading it backwards. Because the opening balance was 918, then the minus 350, minus 52, minus 350 would leave them with 165. For a minute there, I was like, wait a minute, 165? That doesn't make sense. They get a big chunk of money, you know, in there. But now I see what it is. I'm reading it backwards. Um, so I don't, auto loan, monthly streaming. She gets paid from the school district again. Can we have a bank? Transfer of five hundred and fifty dollars. Then her student loan. The 
then the monthly cable closing balance for the month was $1,101.47. So there's a bank transfer. 550 how much is this? Okay, I don't see an amount on it. Okay, so in January, so there's the 1174 credit card payment. Okay, so they made a pharmacy payment, but that's odd that they didn't have a pharmacy payment on the December one. Now, it could be she gets the pills every three months, but I think with something like Oxy, uh, it's usually a month-by-month -month amount because of the addictive properties. I could be wrong with that. Then we have the credit card payment, her school um, money. So like her husband has nothing coming in here. He works, but yet we haven't seen any money. And then there's that bank transfer for $550 yet again. What is that a transfer for? It doesn't have, you know, like it's not like the student loan. It's not the monthly cable. It's not the auto loan. Closing balance was 1200 That's funny because I don't think the streaming service was on here. Yeah, so they didn't pay for the streaming service, but maybe they switched to cable. Credit card payment, credit card payment. They did two back-to-back -back credit card payments. That looks like about right, though. They just didn't spend anything in between them. And then she had her direct deposit was the last thing. So they haven't even spent half the bills that they did on the other one. No student loan payment. Which is odd. No auto loan. Let's see. When's her student loan? Okay, so that's at the end of the month. So that could be why. Auto loans on the 18th, yeah. So that that could could be why. I'm probably just overthinking it, to be honest. Okay, so I'm going to assume this is the credit card. Nothing odd there that I'm noticing, although they could make a minimum payment at 35, but they're trying to get it paid off. Capital Max, what is this? Oh, this is for the credit card. Okay, so maybe it's they have two credit cards, so maybe that's why there were two credit card payments in one month. Okay, prescription drug overdose. Relationship with the daughter, as she's her daughter, substitute teacher, suspects claim she was asleep in her bedroom. Self-employed sound engineer. Suspect claims he was playing online video games in his home office then went to sleep in his bedroom. I mean, that's what he said. So on the morning of Wednesday, February 9th at approximately 6.45 a.m., Samantha Williams entered the victim's bedroom and found her deceased. The victim began hospice care after being diagnosed with stage 4 pancreatic cancer approximately two months prior to her death. Oxycontin had been prescribed for the victim's pain. The victim's toxicology report revealed extremely high levels of Oxycontin, including that the, um, the cause of death was from an overdose of this medication. The victim has no history of suicidal tendencies and due to her illness was physically incapable of taking any form of medication on her own, indicating a third party drugged her and caused the overdose. Okay, well that makes sense why she couldn't drug herself. Okay, so there's no time limit. Take as little or as long as you need to properly bring this case to head. Hmm. Oh man, this is tough. Like I'm not I'm not seeing anything. Anything in this file? Ooh, can I get some water? Oh I wanna 
Can I write on the right whiteboard? Give me the pencil. I can, but how do you... Do you just type? Oh, it won't let me. Literally will not let me. Nothing's happening. Oh, it's right up there. <laughs> yeah, I'm the best. There we go. <laughs> there we go. That's my note. There's a camera on me. Okay, so I'm honestly not really sure. So let's go ahead. I think you should put pressure on her, to be honest, because I feel like she's too... She's not emotional enough. And like I said earlier, I get people do react to tragedy differently. Um, but she just seems a little too laxed about the whole situation. So I say we put pressure. Let's call Martin back. Hey. Yeah, okay, put pressure so on her. <laughs> you want me to apply some pressure? See if I can make her crack? That's the plan. I like that. Not a problem at all. Let me go grab Samantha and uh, we'll get things up and running in just a sec. All right? Bye. Goodbye. This is a continuation with Samantha Williams. Uh, the date is still February 19th of 2022. Uh, Samantha, I, I'm going to be very straightforward with you. As it stands right now, everything, and I mean everything, points to you being the person that did this. What do you mean? What do I mean? What do you Samantha, think he means? You so you have sure. body a language lot more than just the student loans. Oh, um, yeah, but, but everybody has a lot of debt. Mm -hmm. Samantha, I'm going to run through some numbers, okay? You, um, you feel free to correct me if I get anything wrong. Uh, we established the, the $105,000, right, of student loan debt. Uh, you also have uh, $5,700 that you owe on your car. And you have two credit cards, right? Both of which are maxed out. And uh, that is $15,000 for those two. So uh, did I get those numbers correct? Does that sound accurate? Yeah, that sounds about right. Okay. Now, uh, tell me, uh, what does that work out to in terms of a monthly payment, right? I don't need the exact number, just give me a rough idea. Crap ton of money. Thirteen fifty a month, maybe. It's so about thirteen fifty. Okay, I had um, I had fourteen, but we'll go with your number. So thirteen fifty, and you you live with your mom, right? I'm going to assume that you pay her something every month. Is that right? Five fifty. Okay, that explains the credit Just on her account. Help with the groceries and the bills and things, and Elliot contributes about the same. And salary, what do you what do you bring in uh, salary wise after taxes every month? Again, I don't need an exact number, just give me an estimate and that'll be totally fine. Twenty one hundred. About twenty one hundred, okay. So so see Samantha, you have nineteen hundred dollars no, in monthly expenses. Okay, you're only bringing in twenty one hundred dollars a I month. I mean I guess she does if you get it twice. <laughs> right. That's leaving you with two hundred like mass hard a month, just just two hundred dollars a month to cover things like going out, buying clothes. I mean, that's it. You have only two hundred dollars for your disposable income every month. Is that correct? Yeah. Now, see, that's that's really tight. It is. So, see, Samantha, what this what this shows me. This shows me financial motive. Right, you see that, right? Financial motive. <clears throat> She's gonna turn on the waterworks. Now let's, <clears throat> let's switch gears just for a sec, right? So earlier, both you and Elliot stated that uh, Elliot, right, he was the last person to give your mom Oxycontin prior to her death, correct? Correct? Um, yeah, that's, that's what I stated, yeah. 
Okay. And and neither you nor him gave your mom any breakthrough doses that day, correct? Correct? I I did. Oh. You did. But Samantha, you, you just stated that Elliot was the last person to give rocks. I mean, you just stated that. I, I'm sorry. I, I was just confirming what you said that I said earlier. I did. Was it Tuesday? That day. And is there a reason you didn't bring this up earlier? There's so much going on. I honestly, I just overlooked it. I just remembered when I was sitting there in the way. How do you overlook something like that? You, you overlooked. Like you can remember you that. Your mom. Especially when you're there talking to the police. Literally the night before she died, you overlooked that. I know that it sounds hard to believe, but I yeah, yeah, Samantha, that yes, that is very hard to believe. You are correct. I'm sorry, but that's the truth. Okay, so, so you, you were actually the last person to give your mom a dose of Oxycontin prior to her death that Tuesday night. Now, around, around what time did you give her this dose? How much, how much did you give her? Um, the usual, the top 10 milligrams. And uh, Elliot, did Elliot give her any breakthrough doses that day, maybe before he got home? No. And how can you be so sure? I mean, it seems yeah, how like would you, she know? you've left out some very important details today. We write everything down, and there wasn't anything I was given that day. Did you write your, um, your 11 p.m. dose on that chart? I think that's a no. Honestly, I don't remember. Don't remember. Okay, so... So no, no additional breakthrough doses that day, um, unless, unless of course Elliot, right? Maybe he forgot too. No. No. No, Elliot's uh, super responsible. He would never forget something like that. Okay, Samantha, let's let's lay this this all out, okay? Um, you you've got crippling debt, Samantha. Okay, you had a mom who was dying, right? You had, you have this $250,000 life insurance policy. And now, right now, now it's made evident that you were the last person to give your mom Oxycontin prior to her death, right? You gave her a breakthrough dose on top of the already scheduled 7 p.m. dose that night. Okay, now Samantha, I may not be the best detective in the world. That's because that's me. But surely you can see how this makes a very strong case that you did this. You see that, right? No, I didn't. Samantha, you had to have done this. Samantha, you were the last person to give her oxycodone. You just stated that. I didn't do it. I didn't. Samantha, are you 
Are you really telling me that you had nothing to do with the death of your mom? Is that what you're telling me? Yes. Yes, that's what I'm saying. I, I would never okay. do anything. What about accidentally? Okay, what about accidentally? Maybe, maybe we've been looking at this whole thing the wrong way. Samantha, I mean that maybe, maybe you accidentally measured that dosage wrong that night. I mean, she did right, just wake up. You're, you're tired, right? You're stressed. Right? You got all of this craziness going on in your life. Samantha, maybe you just weren't thinking straight. Right? And, and maybe when you went to give her that dose, you measured it incorrectly. What do you think? Samantha, you did this. You know you did. <laughs> hey, look, even if this was an accident, right? The fact still remains that you did this. <laughs> So can you, can you at least admit okay, that maybe, right, just maybe, you accidentally measured that dosage wrong? Can you at least admit that? It's kind of like coercing me. Samantha, right? Samantha, listen, listen. I am on your side. Okay, I am on your side. I know that you would never intentionally kill your mom. I know that. Okay, this, Samantha, this was an accident. Okay, but see, I need you, you to admit that, Samantha. So can, can you at least admit that, that maybe you made a mistake, right? You made a mistake, right? That's, that's possible, right, Samantha? <clears throat> Maybe I guess that anything is possible. Okay, now Samantha, listen, I I need I need a direct answer, okay? I need a, a simple yes or no. Okay? Now, Samantha, I am trying to help you, okay? I'm trying to help you here. Is it possible? that you accidentally measured her dosage incorrectly that day? Yes or no? Yes, okay. Yes, it's possible that... Samantha, Samantha, listen. Listen, listen very carefully, okay? Okay, remember, I am on your side, right? You and I, right, we both know the tremendous amount of stress that you've been under. We know, right? And, and we both know that it is very possible that you accidentally killed your mom. <laughs> now, Samantha, Samantha, what I need, <clears throat> what I need you to do, right? is I need you to, to tell me the truth, okay? Right? What I want to do is I want to make this easy for you, right? Samantha, look, we know this is what happened, right? After all, you were the last person to give her the Oxycontin, okay? So, so please, let's make this easy for you, okay? Tell me the truth. Tell me that you accidentally killed your mom, right? That's the truth, Samantha. Samantha, make this easy for yourself. Okay? Make this easy for yourself. You tell me the truth, right? And then you can put this whole thing behind you. Okay? You tell me the truth, and I will promise to do everything I can to make sure that you never set foot in prison, okay? But you have to tell me the truth. You can't promise that if she actually, like, murdered her on purpose.
Yes, what, Samantha? <laughs> yes, what? That easy. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I think he broke her. I don't, I don't know if I think she really did it. Now, Samantha, listen. 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 I know that was hard. But what you just did, Samantha, you just made this easier for yourself, okay? You just made this a lot easier for yourself. Now, Samantha, Samantha, there's one, one last thing we need to clear up, okay? Samantha, stay with me, okay? Listen, I need you to tell me what happened to those five pills. I need to know what happened to those five pills. I don't know. Samantha, you do. I you don't. Do. Yes, you do, Samantha. You do, and I need you to tell me. Tell me what happened to those five pills. I swear to you, I don't Samantha, know. Samantha, tell me what happened to those five pills. <laughs> I don't. You don't know. See, it's just to me she didn't do it, and I think she felt guilty, like him just bashing her again and again with, you did this on accident, you did this on accident, you gotta tell me the truth. Hello? Well, that, uh, that went better than expected. Did yeah, it? I'm still having a hard time believing that she really forgot about that 11pm breakthrough dose, though. But I guess we did get a confession, so this may be a done deal. Now, I know we still can't account for those five missing pills, but that confession should hold up. But to be honest, because of those pills, I'm still questioning whether or not this was intentional. Maybe Samantha's smarter than she lets on. Now, if it was intentional, we need to know if Elliot was in on it. This seems like the perfect plan that would benefit both of them. Now, he seems pretty well composed, so we really need to think about how we want to move forward with him. I can be aggressive and paint him as an accomplice or even the mastermind behind everything. See how he reacts to those accusations. Or, since he claims to have no idea what happened, I let him speculate on how things went down. Let him explain mm. things on his own terms. See he could slip goes. up that way. Why don't you look things over and let me know what you'd like me to do. Alright, I'll talk to you in a bit. Bye. I mean, he could slip up that way. I really think that might be the best way to go. Although they're like, look at things. Uh, the only thing I can look at is the interview that we just did. With her again. I mean, she, he broke her. He broke her down bad. Although, I mean, it is possible that she did forget about that dose because she woke up. She was tired. She's been stressed. Her mom's in pain. And she wants to help her mom. And it could have been she really just forgot that dose. I honestly don't think she did it on purpose. I mean, because this is the first amount of emotion that she's actually shown. She's been kind of like her husband, like nonchalant about the whole thing. Oh, but honestly, I'm... I'm not sure. I, I really don't know. I mean, I'm going to end it there, guys, because uh, this video is going on about an hour. And um, uh, so I'm just going to go ahead and in there. And so when we come back, uh, we're going to have Elliot explain. That's, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go with that one because I feel like he's too calm and collected. He's going to either shut down completely being accused or he's going to keep that calm and collective. But if he kind of leads him into it, like, look, I really don't know what's going on. I don't know what's happening here. What do you think, Kevin? He, if he's the mastermind, he might be arrogant enough to just kind of give something away or give us kind of like a clue, you know, that we can 
we can keep track of. So, you know, let me know down in the comments down below what you think, you know, going on. Do you think Samantha did it? Do you think Elliot did it? Do you think maybe it really was just an accident? I mean, I would love to see your guys' theories. Um, please leave me a like, subscribe if you haven't, and I'll see you next time. Bye.